What's up guys, Chris here with a new unboxing video and this time it's from APS which are uh, the maker of the CAM 870 shotgun system that I have. Uh, I'll try to talk as I open this. Uh, basically if you've been following my Facebook or Instagram you know that I've been doing quite a bit of tinkering with my 870 and troubleshooting and whatnot. And the last time I had it apart, I noticed that uh, some pieces had actually broken. And uh, I um, documented what was broken, what wasn't working. One of the things was that my trigger was not releasing the hammer. And the other thing that was happening was that I found out that my bolt plate was broken and one of my magazine tube cradle arms was broken as well. And the the bolt plate I'm pretty sure broke off when, um, when I installed my rail at the top of the receiver. Um, I thought I had ground down the, the screws enough to where they weren't interfering with the bolt, but probably what happened was that when I actually install it, like really install it, I tightened down just a little bit too much and so when I racked back the action, one of the screws got caught on the top of the locking block in the, um, what's it called? the bolt and it broke off a piece of the bolt plate. The trigger, uh, when I had to look at it, basically even if I pulled the trigger all the way back, it was not putting enough pivot action on the sear to uh, release the hammers. It was kind of like sluggishly slipping off the sear. And I found that there was the, uh, the bar let's see if I can do this, the bar that's pushing on the sear for it to pivot and release the hammer, the front of this bar was just worn down a little bit to where it wasn't having enough uh, length to push the sear. Um, let's see, yeah, and the uh, magazine crate alarm broke off. I was trying to tighten up the fit of the magazine tube and the barrel in the receiver and I put uh, three layers of electrical tape around the, there's a little indentation at the back of the magazine tube where the cradle arms sort of hold it in place, right? So I put a couple of layers of, of tape there and uh, I put on uh, maybe one layer too much. And so um, when I went to put it back together, uh, it was too tight of a fit and, and one of the uh, cradle arms snapped like right in the pivot. Uh, I'll show you here in a second. So those were the, th the three main issues that I had. The, the other thing that had happened was uh, on my receiver, first of all I made a mistake when drilling the holes for my rail the first time around. Uh, it came out a little bit crooked and also um, yeah, I can show you right here. The, this place right here in the receiver, that's where the, uh, what's it called? Bolt locking plate or bolt stopping plate is seated. And you can see here, those tiny holes, that's where the screws thread into that hold that plate in place. And one of the screws had stripped out, I think there are, M2 screws, which is pretty tiny. It's a two millimeter diameter screw threading. And so, uh, one of the problems probably I over tightened it when putting it in installing it. And the other thing is, every time that you uh, pump or rack the action forward and the bolt comes forward, what's making it stop is that plank right there. And so you can imagine, you, I use quite a bit of force when racking the bolt. 
And so the bolt comes forward, the locking block has a little uh, nub sticking off at the top. Let's see, uh, this is the top of the bolt. It kind of comes up like this. And the bolt plate is here, right? And so when it goes forward, that's... Um, <laughs> I don't have enough hands to illustrate this, but basically that's the stopping power. So as you use this and rack the action back and forth, as you do on a shotgun, you're going to put a lot of stress on here. The good thing is that the fit of the actual plate is very tight. So there's not a lot of back and forth play. But anyway, what I'm going to do on this receiver, first of all, I'm going to drill new holes at the top from a rail mount. Uh, put a tiny rail piece on here for my scope. I'm going to drill out these two holes all the way to the top and uh, thread them out to M3 size screws. So they're going to go through the plate, through the entire thickness of the uh, top of the receiver here. You can kind of tell uh, yeah I don't have a light like right in front of the camera so it's a bit difficult but you can see the thickness here it's not much that those two tiny screws are hanging on to right when they're in there so I'm thinking by drilling all the way through of the receiver and threading them with a, I think it's one a half or one full size up in diameter of the screws. That that's going to give me a more uh, what's it called? Basically, making it stronger so it doesn't break off. And so the funny thing is, um, I just need to say that APS is an absolute great company to uh, deal with in terms of customer service. I've emailed them many times over the years. I've placed four or five orders directly from their site and they've been absolutely fantastic all throughout. So uh, two thumbs up to APS customer service. They actually, I, I emailed them and told them about my problems. I told them straight up, hey, I got broken parts here I'm probably responsible for them breaking because of this and that and how it all happened. Uh, and since I was having trouble, you can, that bar right there, uh, I'm gonna show you here in a second how it works, but um, what was I saying? Yeah, so I told them it was my own fault. I wanted to make a custom order for the parts that were broken so that I could rebuild and fix my shotgun. And basically, he, they replied back, um, where, he, he was asking, where did you buy it from and where are you located? So I told him uh, I bought it straight from them and I, I was located in Sweden. And they replied back, uh, I almost fell off my chair, uh, as we say here in Sweden. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, that... Um, since I bought it from them, and it was like in two or three years of buying it, that it was under warranty and that they were going to send me parts free of charge, but I had to pay for shipping. So just a quick sign on here before you go emailing APS for free parts. That was because I bought it directly from them. If you have bought your APS product elsewhere, you're going to be directed to whatever retailer you bought it from, right? So, what I ended up getting is a new receiver that was not under warranty. That was just because I messed up uh, on my current one. I tried to do the mod that I was talking about here, but I completely messed up. And so I ended up uh, putting M M4 screws, I think, through the top. So I got two screw heads sticking up right here and then they go into uh, the bolt locking plate, right? So I got a new receiver. I opted to get the reinforced C plate, which, which is the sear. And the thing is, I'll show you uh, in a later video, but this has a different shape, which probably helps put uh, force 
on, hmm, let's see, I had a real trigger laying around here somewhere. We'll have to find it. Um, but anyway, so I think the, diff, the, the new shape here is going to improve the trigger action. I apologize if I'm stumbling a little bit. I am not very good at multitasking and speaking at the same time, obviously. So anyway, I got the receiver. I had to pay for that. Actually, I had to pay for everything. They gave me a bit of a discount on the bolt plate and the magazine cradle. They sent the entire trigger group all of this free of charge uh, because I was asking just for the trigger because I needed uh, the new trigger bar that's in here and he said uh, no sir uh, we can't send you just a trigger because the assembly is too complicated so we'll send you a full trigger uh, group assembly free of charge just because I was having trouble with the, uh, the trigger and I was like okay and I, I didn't tell him that I knew how to take it apart um, so, you know, I'm just thankful that I'm getting a completely new trigger group. And then he set up a custom order with uh, the receiver, trigger group free of charge, discount, uh, discount, and this I paid full price for, and this as well. So, um, I mean, m most of the time when you email companies directly or even retailers and tell them that you have problems with a product, um, Usually what happens is they ignore you because they don't want to deal with it or they tell you that they can't do anything about it or that if you're lucky they'll be able to send you something, uh, a replacement part, but you'll have to pay for it, right? So APS, even though the way that they're acting should be the standard in the industry, it's not, unfortunately. So I'm, I'm, I'm just really happy with them as a company overall. The APS platform has some issues. They're obviously supplying spare parts on the warranty, which is just mind blown, <laughs> basically. Uh, they're selling replacement parts, upgrade parts, readily available from their website, which is awesome. Not many companies do that. And also being very, very friendly and helpful when I've emailed them. So nothing but good to say about APS as a company. Let me zoom in a little bit here so we can get a closer look. Oh, I'm running out of breath uh, doing the unbagging and uh, talking at the same time. So let, since I don't have my spare trigger uh, or the original trigger here, let me show you what I'm talking about. So here's the trigger group. When you, I got it uh, off safe. When you pull the trigger, I'm gonna hold the hammer because I've, trust me, I've slammed this down on my finger and it hurts real bad. There's a lot of force here. Look here what happens with the sear when I pull the trigger. This is a brand new trigger pack from APS. Let's see if we can get in close. So I'll push the hammer back a little bit to release the tension, pulling it Oh, I'm sorry, I was, huh? oh, I'm a wuss, I have to push it all the way back. So there you can see, it's released, and it barely clears the sear, right? So the least amount of wear that you have on that bar right there, pushes on the bottom of the sear, pivoting it backwards, release the hammer. If you get a tiny bit of wear there, your trigger action to release the hammer is going to suffer. And what's surprising is that it's this, this tight on a brand new trigger pack. You can see there how close it is. And I'm pu pulling the trigger way back. So anyway, I think that the new sear which sits in, let me put it on safe so I don't slam my fingers. It sits in like this, right? And the shape down here, where the tr trigger bar actually interfaces has been changed. There's a little bit more material there. 
So hopefully that's going to work. But I also have, which I'm really curious to see. Let me go get it. All right, so I got a real Remington 870 trigger assembly from Brownells. And let's take a look at how that fits in the APS trigger pack. So before I install this, here's this is the bar that I'm talking about. Let's see, it goes this way. So when you pull the trigger back, it pivots this bar onto here to push the uh, sear like this, releasing the hammer from here. Let's uh, release the tension from the hammer. Just two quick pins. And yeah, right, I have to remove the sear spring as well. And this just wiggles straight out. So here's the original trigger. And here's the real trigger. You can tell that they're, at first glance, pretty much identical. Uh, original APS trigger here, real Remington trigger here. So let's see if that pin is any longer on the real pack. Yeah, look at that. Oh, let's see if we can line it up here. Nah, you can't see from that angle, but um, it looks to me like the real trigger up here up front has a longer bar. And I'm talking, let's put it back, just slip it in like so. And let's see, it goes, I always forget, it goes B, does it go below that thing? No, it goes on top. Push in this big pin here. Line up, whoop. Line up the small pin, I'm hoping it fits. I can line it up properly. It did. Perfect. God damn it, I forget which way if that if that bar goes on top or below. Let's see. So basically when the trigger is forward. Hmm. Jesus Christ, that's ex oh, fucking hell. That's exactly why we shouldn't be doing that. Okay, so we have a problem here. Well, actually, no, we don't. I need to put the spring back in. So the sear spring. This is way beyond unboxing right now, obviously, but just really curious. So that spring goes. Hoping I don't send it flying here. Like so. And now we got trigger pulls. So let's cock the hammer. And here's what and I think it's too tight of a fit. It's supposed to push down. Anyway, let's take a look what happens. When we pull the trigger now, draw push the hammer back a little, and we're getting nothing because the arm down here 
is too long, so it's not dropping down to the ledge that it actually needs to push on the sear. Let's see if I can release this thing. Hmm. Yeah, it's a bit too long. There's too much material, but I'd rather have that and file it back than too little. I'll also have to see what happens <coughs> when I put in the C plank, but let's see if we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now it's working. Let's see. There's the hammer. And you can see we're getting a lot more clearance. Not much, but definitely better. Nice. So I'm a little bit concerned about this part right here. You can kind of see it has a tendency to want to go out and over this edge. It's supposed to sit on top like that. But anyway, uh, we're uh, weighing our, over our heads right now in the unboxing. I just want to check that out, see how it works. But uh, also, what I notice is the safety is having a little bit of a difficulty engaging in the trigger. That should be an easy fix. It's probably that the uh, the safety basically either oh, let's see, these two notches right here. Either it allows those to move back or it blocks them. So it's probably just a little bit of a filing job on the uh, cross whatever in there. <clears throat> I'm um, completely out of breath here, so let's go at it again. What's going to happen with the receiver? Gonna drill two holes at the top all the way through, zut, zut, thread them. Uh, I think they're M4 for my rail. We're going to sand off whatever residue uh, ends up inside. Make sure that we get the screw holes straight this time, so I don't have to do two sets of holes. We are going to drill from the bottom to the top through these two holes, uh, wind them up to M3, thread them, uh, put two screws in here, when they come up at top, then I'm gonna trim them down so that they're flush, put a little black paint on top to mask those off. I'm also going to be doing the loading gate mod that you've been hearing and seeing about on the SAI style APS shotguns. It basically means that you're lowering this profile right here, the top edge. You drop that down one or two mils, millimeters. Uh, I've seen some extreme cuts, like I saw something on uh, Google last night that they had cut it all the way down to here. But the more you cut down these two sidewalls, the less the less support you're gonna have sideways for when putting in the shell. So I'm probably just gonna do two millimeters, pull those down, these two edges. Then we're going to reprofile these two at a 45 degree angle so that when you come in with the shell, instead of having a flush 90 degree angle like that, going to angle the walls inwards so if you come in with the shell it's going to slide in much easier i'm also thinking about i'm not sure if i'm going to do it maybe profiling the edges of the ejection port at a let's see now i have the 90 degree angle like so on these uh, again doing a 45 so that when the shells get ejected uh, they'll have a bit of an easier time coming out. So that's it for the receiver. I noticed there are some 
minor dings on here straight out of the box. The old me would probably be a little bit disappointed with that, but uh, the new me is more function over looks. It's not really a big deal considering that I'm going to uh, mod this anyway. What's going to happen with the trigger group? Um, yeah, let me just say before I continue here, um, when I'm doing all of this, I am going to be recording everything and I'm going to make like a, a video series covering the APS shotgun. So it's going to be, uh, let's call it an advanced field strip where I take off the uh, stock or pistol grip, forend, barrel, magazine tube, and all that, take out the bolt. Then we're going to do detail strip of the trigger group, reassembly of that, same with the bolt, and then finally reassembling the entire rifle. And in between me doing that, I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to be recording like doing the actual mods and filing, nobody wants to look at that stuff, but I'm going to probably show you before and after footage of how the stuff looks. So it's gonna happen with the trigger pack, I'm gonna strip this down. Uh, see if I can get the real trigger here, or yeah, real trigger to work as expected with the new C plate or sear. I might not have to do anything. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the original trigger in, put the new C plate in, and see if that just works right out of the box. Then I'm going to keep the the real trigger as a spare part. Uh, clean everything up, polish up some, uh, polish up some, some of the contact surfaces. Uh, lubricate, put back together. Do uh, functions, checks, and whatnot. Let's see. I'm curious. Yeah. Anyway, I'm talking too much about that. Um, that's it for that. Um, we're going to be replacing the firing pin or push pin as APS calls it. This is actually a little bit of a daunting task. This cup right here is the firing pin alignment cup. So when this goes on the uh, firing pin, friction fit, so it sits like this, and this is aligns with the shell, making sure that the firing pin goes in centered. Um, and it's a bit of a hassle to put into place whoop, because you have to put it in a vise and press fit it together. Not looking forward to that. I might also have to drill out the hole in the bolt to accept this new uh, reinforced thicker firing pin. We're going to be replacing the bolt plate. The piece that broke off is right here where it's the thinnest. It snapped right there and there. So this, basically that whole part came off. Fortunately, it was not enough to uh, affect the function of this plate, which is which is what catches on. This is the shell lifter arm or shell carrier dog or uh, I'll try to look up the actual names. But this comes in here and um, hooks into this notch. So we're going to replace that. We're going to put in these new magazine cradle arms. And I can already tell I'm going to have to be doing some fitment of this. I think, or maybe not. So that's how that sits in. And then it has these four screws. Yeah, that's the other thing that happened with my original receiver is that some of the threads in these got stripped as well. So when I was trying to tighten these down, uh, they were just spinning around. God damn, that's a long uh, unboxing video. I'm I'm hoping you guys enjoyed that I, even though I uh, maybe talk a little bit too much, that I actually give you good info 
and that it's enjoyable to watch even if it gets a bit uh, long-winded so receiver trigger pack original trigger firing pin uh, by the way I'm hoping you guys are um, noticing and liking my new background I, I personally like the blue background but it was not wide enough so I had when I had it on here you could see the edges of my uh, table which bothered me and I also wanted a uniform non-distracting surface and it had to be um, very softly textured because otherwise if I hold something up to the camera like this it's going to focus on whatever texture is on here because the the uh, focus sensor is uh, contrast based so if what I'm holding up here is not producing more contrast than the background it's still going to focus on the background so this is a help me out here what the English word for this is this is when you go camping and you're getting your sleeping bag out and you don't want to put the sleeping bag directly on the ground this is what you put between the ground and your sleeping bag and I had no idea what it's called in English so help me out with that please and there you have it probably the longest unboxing video in the history of my channel for what this actually is but uh, again trying to provide uh, good and solid info and as much as I can <sighs> so that's it for this video um, like I said what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna clear this off take up my uh, shotgun screw it down record everything and uh, I'll upload that in like a project series if you will so you'll be able to follow along and hopefully get some good tips. Uh, that's it for this video, and I'll see you guys next time.